Alright, hello, my name is Christopher Yee, and this is going to be a very basic tutorial on how to use After Effects. So, let's get started. <clears throat> um, first thing you should know um, is, first thing is, uh, hopefully when you open up After Effects, your layout should look like this, and in case it doesn't, you're going to come up here over to Window, click on Workspace, go over to this area right here and just click on standard um, typically this is the easiest layout at least for me to use it's my personal favorite um, you could use you know different layouts depending on what you're trying to do so if you're using like an animation heavy uh, project or if you're doing one you click on paint this is different um, but for the most part uh, you can do almost any project in the standard layout um, so once you're here uh, let's talk about the panels. So this right here is the project panel. It's very similar to the one in the Premiere Pro. Pretty much uh, you're just going to be dragging and importing all of the video files, pictures, GIFs, JPEGs, anything. It's going to go right here into this area. Um, I'll try to pull up a sample of that. Let's say I drag. Uh, sure. Drag this into project slot, and here you have your first um, video file. Um, we're going to come back to that later in a second. The next panel here is the effect controls, and this is very similar to the effects tab that you'd see in Premiere Pro. Um, how it works is if you drag an effect onto a video layer, uh, what would happen is if you want to look at it, manipulate it, you know, change the settings on it so that it would affect what you see in your composition or your final product, you would come to this tab right here. Um, if you were color correcting, you know, using a plugin, all of that, it comes right here to the effect controls. Um, next tab. Actually, no, first, if you, and what, uh, what will happen is if you manip anything you manipulate here, it will come down into the timeline that is not showing here right this second, but I will show you how this and what happens down here are connected. Uh, if you come over here to this tab, this is your composition tab. Pretty much this is where you're going to be looking the majority of your project. This is where you're going to be able to see what you're working on. You're going to be able to you know move things around, kind of check the progress of everything as it's playing out. Um, pretty basic it's the exact same as the right window as you would see in Premiere Pro um, anything that shows up on your timeline is gonna come here and vice versa uh, right here this next panel is the layer tab um, this is this tab you don't really you aren't gonna really use it that much unless you're doing unless you're gonna do a lot of work on an individual layer within a, uh, a project uh, typically you're not going to use it too much. The only time you're ever really going to use it is if you're doing a project where you need to track motion or track a camera because this is where you would come in to do that but you're not going to spend too much time in this panel. Um, next one this right here oh, no, I realize this. this is the I'm just going to adjust this a little bit so you guys can see this is the information tab. This is pretty much going to give you all the information about what's going on here in your composition. See how when I move the X and Y coordinates change. That pretty much just tells me where I'm at in the uh, composition panel. And once you have a uh, video slot in here, or video file in here, it's going to tell you the red, green, and blue levels of uh, the picture depending on where your cursor is pointing. Um, coming over here, this is not going to be too important because when you come to After Effects, you're typically not playing with audio. After Effects is typically just for visual stuff. Um, but if you come here, you'd be able to check and see the audio levels of your uh, file. You can play and adjust with the panning, but like I said, you typically don't use After Effects for that. Um, over here is the preview panel. You come here pretty much just to check on the... Uh, well, you pretty much just use this to kind of like render and it, this tab would show you the frame rate of uh, 
a video as it's playing back because in After Effects because you're using a lot of effects and a lot of uh, video files layered onto one final output After Effects if you're not working on an incredible computer is going to lag kind of a bit so this will tell you here you know if it's if your video file is playing back to you in real time or if it's playing a little bit slower uh, it's almost never it's never going to play faster than uh, the FPS that you shoot your project in or that you uh, have exported the video file to so but you come here like if I wanted to say for example play uh, play this uh, video file what I'm doing here is I'm dragging it onto the composition if I wanted to play it back using where in preview press play and play for me you can do the same thing by pressing the space bar stop start that type of thing um, you know you can go frame by frame you can skip to the last frame all that type of stuff it's pretty much just it's kind of like a media media player um, this right here don't worry about this uh, that is a little bit more advanced than I'm gonna get for right now this is the frame rate of your project as it, the preview is indicating and or at least as the as the layer is concerned this video is shot and shot was in uh, 30 frames per second this right here this is the effects and presets tab uh, typically uh, I don't use this you can um, what happens over here is obviously you can see all of your effects are going to be put under each of these folders and you can use different effects and plugins uh, onto your video file as I'm going to show here so say I wanted to color this I'd go to this plugin that I have in here drag it onto the video in the composition and then it comes up and shows here in the effect controls. Come over to my project, come into the effect controls, and now in this effect panel, effect controls panel, I can adjust uh, anything in, on this video file. So say I want to make it more yellow. See now the midtones have become more yellow, so I make the shadows more blue because it's a cloud in the sky. And yeah, so um, typically, yeah, like I was saying, I typically don't use this because uh, your effects don't always become loaded into this area. Usually, you have to click, and if you type in searching for something specific, because you know maybe you'll have a lot of a lot more plugins than me. Um, type in blur. Usually, if you're working with a lot of video files on a project, which typically you will be for anything complex or decently complex. Uh, this will lag and your program will start to slow down so typically what I do just to avoid that lag I will come up into this effect tab right here and just search for what I'm looking for here I don't if you want to make that usable you click on the composition panel click effect okay sorry let's see if I can get this there we go yeah you come down here into the timeline click on your file click effect and this almost never lags at all when I do this, so I would suggest using this effect Dropbox. Um, moving on to the next panel, this is the tracker. Um, I'll explain this a little bit more. I plan on doing a project-specific tutorial for this panel, but uh, here you are able to track the, the camera motion of a shot. You are able to stabilize it using a warp stabilizer or you can use it with a different type of uh, stabilizing motion. I personally would recommend warp stabilizing. And then you can also track the motion of objects in the shot um, and parent uh, specific objects that you want to it. Like if you see someone uh, is, has like a text box like snapped onto their head, like uh, let's see if I can kind of do it here. Like that, that type of thing. That's what you would be uh, using tracking motion of uh, footage for. Like if I wanted to track the motion of one of these clouds here, this boy, I wanted to track the motion of a cloud, and I could have you know font or text moving along with it. Um, and I'll get more into more into detail on that in the these project specific or in the specific project that will involve this panel. Um, and down here we have the timeline. You'll see this is a uh, my the video layer that's being displayed right now I could drag other stuff onto under or beneath it kind of similar to Photoshop or a regular uh, Premiere Pro timeline um, 
if you look down here you'll see that the effects tab like I said earlier is interconnected with this panel up here so say I wanted this to show up down here boom I have a simpler version of it in here where I get all the same options up here but I can you know play with them down here so say master saturation Let's see what happens if I pop that up Nothing. Uh, oh yep see there we go found something that's so all of this that you see up here comes down here this is kind of a big plug-in um, so I'm gonna if I were to want to change the effects of this through the colorista plugin that I added I'd do it up here just because it's easier to look at uh, so I'm gonna close this close the effects up uh, then you have the pretty standard uh, uh, properties of this video it's like say the size like if I want to make it bigger if I wanted to make it smaller you know that type of deal um, you know I can change the rotation uh, make it transparent play with the opacity that type of thing um, so all that you can see down here in the timeline um, all of this uh, not too important I mean obviously this but it's not too important right now for this basic first introductory part of the tutorial uh, you'll be looking at these as you get into more specific projects um, same goes for down here um, this is the toolbar right here that you'd see in any other Adobe Premiere uh, or sorry Adobe product not going to take the time to explain that because if you're not familiar with Premiere Pro you should be looking at this anyways um, or Photoshop for that matter all these drop boxes pretty self-explanatory um, but right now actually no one last thing before we go take a look at the render queue so say you know I finished my project I want to export it what you do is this is my file product I've color corrected my clouds using After Effects and this is what I want I'm gonna come up here to file going down to export add to render queue now what happens is I get popped into the render queue and my final project or final product is ready to go but you know obviously format settings are important because you don't want to take you don't want to waste all the time you just spent with these visual effects and making them look blurry so first thing you're gonna choose where you want to send your final product I'll send mine to my desktop uh, call it colored clouds Let's save then I'm going to go to my output module, click on lossless. We're going to change the format of this because it's the, at least in my opinion, and this is what I use, the most time efficient, uh, quality efficient output. Set it to QuickTime. I prefer this one. Obviously, you could do H2, H.264 if you're just going to upload it to YouTube, but I'm pretty paranoid about anything that I've done in After Effects coming out, even the slightest bit blurry and just ruining the project. So I use QuickTime, press OK. Uh, actually, sorry, let me come back to that. Millions of colors, always, always use millions of colors. Yours might be different, uh, but always millions of colors. Uh, Pre-multiplied RGB for channels. Um, all of this, anything you see here, just copy this. This is pretty solid. Press OK. Come over to Render Settings on this so quality is best yep all this is good so the only thing you usually ever will typically change here is your frame rate so say I shot my whole project in 24 and that's what I want it to be in in Premiere Pro see this now is showing that what I shot was in 30 frames per second so say I shot my entire movie in 24 frames per second and then I went and got some b-roll of clouds uh, and I shot it in 30 First of all, you probably should have shot it in 30 in the first place, but just to keep everything consistent, you would want to export this in 24 frames per second. So you'd come in here, change this to 24, yada yada, but because I don't have a whole movie, I'm just going to use this. Use the frame rate that the clouds footage is already in, press OK. All my settings are done. Press render. It'll render out my project, and when it's done, it'll pop up on my desktop, and that's it. 
Um, so for now, that is all you need to know about the basics of After Effects, at least now when you're looking at this, uh, you shouldn't see anything too confusing anymore at least. All, I gave a basic understanding of all the panels, I think, yeah, so that's everything you need to know for now. Uh, the next video will have a tutorial that I think we will, I think we're going to use probably the tracking motion. But yeah, um, I will see you next time. My early day.